All right, we are live. Uh, what's going on, guys? So I know, I know, I know I didn't do a podcast for the longest time. I apologize. I'm actually doing this podcast on the very last day that I am here, wherever here is in California before I leave for winter ball. So I'm trying to jam pack a bunch of stuff into this last day. Um, I was always a procrastinator in school, not a good tendency, guys. All right. Um, today's podcast we're going to be talking about physical and mental prep before an outing Um, just know that everything that i'm going to specify in regards to physical and mental prep is my personal preference okay it's not going to work for everybody i always always talk about and encourage guys to develop routines that they know for certain work for them meaning they're not just guessing towards what routine to implement right like they have the ability you guys have the ability to come to absolutes with okay such and such allow me to feel good so and so you know blah 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 like i just i just think routines oof routines i can talk all about routines but we're not going to get into it because a lot to discuss in the pre-roll and so little time so first and foremost pre-roll we'll, we'll spend probably four minutes and then we'll get to the actual episode so um free plyo ebook so i think a year ago I, I i produced is it produced or published i guess it would be published i published a plyo ball routines and drills ebook and then over time i was just like you know what i'll just release it for free so you guys can have that i will link that in the show notes all you got to do you just got to be a member of my website it's free okay so you sign up free member you'll get access to all my free content including that ply of all ebook so you're going to go to the specific link the robbyroshow.com slash free dash plyo and then um, on there you're just going to download it um, also as i mentioned i'm leaving to winter ball I will be gone for however long I will be gone for. <laughs> I don't know. They don't have a schedule. Um, this whole COVID madness is pretty crazy in terms of trying to be predictable with schedules and whatnot. So I have no idea when I'm coming back. But uh, until then, my services on my website will be discontinued, meaning I can't. It's so hard to juggle, so hard to balance the plain side and the instruction side. I will still try to be producing content. but. I really am going to Puerto Rico as a baseball player, baseball player only. That's going to be priority. So all my services will be discontinued. However, I will um, I will try to push out an ebook, hopefully on the plane flight tomorrow. <laughs> but can't make any promises. I still have 12 analysis to do today. Yikes! And um, but all my other ebooks are still available: velocity development ebook, throwing mechanics ebook pitch grip ebook and uh, mobility ebook. I need to update the mobility ebook, but yeah. Also with winter ball in mind, I will be doing weekly vlogs. And I know I said weekly last time when I went to Lexington, I'm really going to try to do weekly vlogs. I'm going to hire somebody to actually clip my content together. So I don't have to spend a bunch of time on that. Um, so I will try to be doing that. So be sure guys, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube, Robbie Rowland, the link, will be in the show notes subscribe to the youtube we're gonna have fun with the weekly vlogs i'm gonna probably release one i filmed yesterday and i'll film today and yesterday was a bullpen prep um, for the whole day and then today's will be my my last day home packing up having anxiety over all this (laughs) work i gotta do um yeah so you get to see me there um okay a couple more things actually the last thing um there if you didn't see my instagram today i put up on my instagram story well my buddy did my pitch grip consultant uh, jeremy machino put up a chart because i send him my rap soda reports after every bullpen and he put up a chart i didn't even realize this but apparently since the time that i got home from lexington till the, my last bullpen uh which was yesterday i jumped i think an average of four something miles per hour and a max of like five miles per hour yesterday i was up to 96 five i think without really even putting a hold like honestly without putting an emphasis on like velocity development and like intentionally throwing harder honestly like 
uh, if you guys have listened to my podcast that I did when I was road tripping home from Lexington, it was a lot of it was not really on throwing harder, right? It was more on being deceptive and and um, optimizing my pitch repertoire and all that stuff. So the the reason why I bring that up is because again, I want to put a huge importance on like the only thing that I would say. I did differently was like when I was in Lexington, I didn't have access to like the training equipment or whatever it was a hotel, and I was juggling like being a player and basically a full time entrepreneur businessman, <laughs> which was tough. So I didn't really train as much as I would like to there. But when I got home, I have the lab in the backyard and I got after it. The first day I got home, I called uh, Dr. Josh Heenan. And I was like, yo, write me a report. Let's go. It's grind time. We got to do this, right? So, you know, he wrote me a program and I just followed it. I trained you know, three heavy days a week, basically five days a week. And then it dawned on me this morning. I was like, man, this whole 90 mile hour formula thing is legit. <laughs> so that is my huge mental, uh, or that's my big like emphasis that I kind of came to the real, I mean, I always knew it was because when I trained with them, it was kind of the same story, right? Um, but I wanted to share that with you guys, like legitimately just training and doing those things that he had me doing and, and just being efficient with that and being intentional with my training protocols, man. Um, Yikes. So I can save you $100. Sign up for 90 Mile Hour Formula Remote Programming. There's going to be a link in the show notes, or you can just go to therobbyroshow.com slash ask. The link will be in there as well. And you're going to hit that. You're going to ask me, hey, Robbie, how can you help me save $100 on the 90 Mile Hour Formula Remote Programming? And I'll send you a link so you can do that. Because if you're anyone that's focusing on baseball development, there's no reason in my personal opinion, and I'm biased, I get it, that you should not be training remotely with the Advanced Therapy Performance Team and Dr. Heenan. It's, it's, it's unreal. It's very, very individual specific, focuses on your deficiencies, and always, always puts an emphasis on your movement quality and, oh, how much more do I have to say, honestly? I'm biased. I get it. Whatever. Okay. We're going to dive into it. Physical and mental prep before an outing. Remember, I'm a nerd, and um, I'm going to get a drink of water. So pause for something. Sorry about that. I'm a nerd. This wasn't always my routine. This wasn't my way of going about outings. Um, when I came out of the womb or when I was 18, when I first got drafted, this, again, was like things that just developed over time and me being intentional with the recognition of, okay, in order for me to be my best, right? So if, in order for me to accomplish the goals that I have set out for me, like there's certain things that I need to do day in, day out, before outings, after outings, like whatever, to put myself in the best possible situation to accomplish those goals, right? And this is, again, why I always speak on passion because passion is gonna be your foundation right if you love it and you just live for it you breathe it then all of the things that are within the process and within the preparation of it come a lot easier man you know like if it's a grind i know i say grind a lot but i really don't mean i grind when i play baseball when i do anything baseball related because i freaking love it and it shouldn't be a grind you should love it you should love putting in the work you should have the right reasons for doing what you do um which reminds me, I got asked a really good question the other day, and it was like, what, what am I supposed to do, or what are you supposed to do if you are really good at baseball, but you just don't love it? And I was like, holy smokes, that's crazy <laughs> to think about. <laughs> but, um, but anyways, again, if you get anything, honestly, from this entire episode, uh, I, I really would love for you to get the simple notion of like, be intentional with your recognition of what to do, what not to do, what things work, what things don't work. Like life is but just a trial and error process. And then finding the right things, you know. So I'm gonna speak on some things that I do. These aren't everything that I do. I'm sure there's a lot more that um, I'm probably not gonna just think of off the top of my head. But um, I'll probably produce more content as we go on if there's anything that comes up. And look, I'm going to winter ball 
and I'm going to have like an, an idea of how to approach certain outings, but I could develop new things throughout my time playing over there, right? Like there could be other, you know, things that, that come up that I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try that. And then boom, I try it out and I'm like, freaking, Hey dude, like I, this is great. You know, whether it be a, a preparation type thing, whether it be a post game thing, whether it be a during game thing, like there's so many, so many opportunities <laughs> to trial and error with stuff. Okay. So from the physical standpoint, now I've done multiple podcasts on like my five day starting pitching routine. So I would encourage you guys to go check those out. Um, I won't speak too much on the physical. I do want to put more emphasis on like the mental component and like how I prepare from the mental side of it. Cause I think hopefully there's, there's some things that I can touch on here today that you've never really thought of that maybe you'll, you'll put into play. But um, for physical preparation, um, body prep obviously is a huge thing for me. I found later in my career um, that I did really well when like I had exerted a pretty good amount of energy before I'd throw, right? So like, you know, I was always so cautious about you here saving your bullets or, um, you know, expending your energy during game time. And that was something that I did first couple years of pro ball, you know, for example, sitting around the house all day, waiting for your start day, or, or just like kind of sitting around or knowing that you're a bullpen guy and knowing that you're hot that day, like throwing at a very, very low amount of volume that day. Um, you know, that was something for me that I realized later that I couldn't do, you know, I had to have a purpose. I had to train my body accordingly. If you guys been following me for a while and you watch my stuff, you know that I throw every day. I throw a lot. I can get on the mound at any point and be ready. Like that's something that I, I, I solely believe is not just a coincidence. You know, I train my body to be able to do these things. Like for example, yesterday I challenged myself getting on uh, the pocket radar, putting the pocket radar on record and then challenging myself with, all right, how quickly can I go from basically like somewhat cold? Now I wasn't cold, like it was kind of warm out and I had set up the whole entire rap soto and, and all the tripods and like I was sweating, but like I challenged myself with, okay, if Skip calls down, you know, and I'm in the bullpen and it's an emergency and he calls down saying, get rolling up, you got the next hitter. Like I need to have the ability to get hot quick, you know, and then in order to do that, what does common sense say? Well, train that way, train your body, train your arm, right? To be able to adapt to that. So yesterday, for example, I, I trained in, a, in an environment of like, all right, get grab the ball. Now, how quickly can I get to 95 miles an hour? And I don't have it in front of me, but I want to say it was like, it's the quickest I've ever done it. Um, maybe like 13, 13 throws and I was at 95. And those were the first couple throws. So I did the same thing like that, similar thing. Um, when I did a pull down day with, with pocket radar, like how quickly can I get to hundred miles an hour? Now, again, I want to put emphasis on like, you're, you're not going to just listen to this and hear that. And then all of a sudden be like, Oh, I'm going to do that too. And then go out and try to do the exact same thing. Why do I say that? Because like your body is not equipped to do that, especially if you've never done it, right? Like it's something that has to be built up over time. It's stress, it's tolerance, it's adaptation. These things, they don't just happen in a day, they take time. But with that, you need to be intentional with how to go about training that way, right? Um, and be smart. So for me, like I said, I learned later that I, I couldn't, just totally take away essentially like volume, you know, volume that I did really well with volume. So for example, you know, starting routine, it would be a lot of throwing throughout the week, uh, even a lot of throwing on start day, you know, long toss, pull downs. That was something that I always needed to do on, on start day. Um, so out of the bullpen, there's a huge notion of like, save your bullets. It's a long season. You got to throw a lot when I first made the move to the bullpen in 2014, I kind of took that approach and I was terrible. <laughs> Not only did like, I didn't, I, I just wasn't throwing hard. I wasn't recovering good. Um, I lost velocity as the season went on. And then when I had a different approach, you know, it was the opposite. I gained velocity as the season went on. I recovered better than anyone. There was all these things that kind of were just a benefit. Now, again, I'm different. I could just be different. You could be someone, but your responsibility is to take the guessing out of it for you and to make dang sure to identify 
who you are, what you need to be at your best, right? That's the simple message of this whole entire podcast. Um, so body prep, uh, big mobility guy. I need to make sure there's a lot of times that, and I'm sure a lot of people can attest to this, like on um, start day or, or the day that you actually play in a game, for some reason, like you felt great all week and you were throwing great all week, your body felt great all week, and then come game day, for some reason you feel stiff, you feel tight, tired, like lethargic, heavy, whatever. I hate that, and for some reason it happens. So I put a huge emphasis on like prep work before outings, doesn't matter if it's starting or bullpen, I need to make sure that I don't feel that. Now the process is is in which like, okay, how do you go about not feeling that? For me, it's like a lot of um, FRC type, you know, mobility training, um, a lot of like active range of motion training, um, a lot of plyometric stuff, things that you can do, right? Like whether it be in the bullpen or just before the outing, those things for me, you know, like pales rails, um, lifts off and end range holds like all these little things for me like just fire up the central nervous system and get me going um, and helps me feel a little bit more loose that day um, but yeah everyone's different what's the next thing I mentioned long toss pull downs that's a huge thing bullpen if I'm a bullpen guy which I think I honestly will be probably the rest of my journey um, I'm still going to long toss and pull down on days that I'm, I'm hot to throw. That's another thing that I've talked about recently in regards to how I'm setting up my training and like throwing volume for now before going to winter ball was like, I'm doing the same thing, right? So I'll get up um, early, have my whole entire routine. And then around like 10, 11, 12, I'll go to the park and I'll long toss and I'll pull down and then I'll come back to the park, you know, right before dark and I'll throw a sim game you know get up get warm 20 pitches here we go there's a lot of things that i think people don't realize like when they're in the off season everything changes and it's like well if you're going to make your money in a game which a game is occurring during season then why would the schedule of the off season and the game season well and the <laughs> and the actual season why would those change so drastically that's something that's never made sense to me um Another thing physically I, I, I wrote down, um, heat. I'm a huge heat guy. I love heat for some reason, meaning uh, like atomic bomb, red hot, biofreeze. Uh, why am I drawing a blank on the one that I've been using a lot lately? Um, it's the tiger one. Tiger bomb, yikes, that was tough. You guys didn't hear that. Yeah, I've been using tiger bomb a lot. They sent me a bunch of stuff. I want to say like a year ago and I love it for some reason I love heat and I love putting heat on and then putting long sleeves over it and just dying <laughs> I don't know if it's all placebo but if it is then it works uh, another physical component last one then we'll touch on the mental stuff but um, the uh, you know like the prep work physically before the outing now this is something that doesn't just need to be a starting routine it's obviously going to be easier for the starting routine because you have so many days to prep. You have a bullpen, like a, a scheduled bullpen to, to throw, you know, and you understand like, okay, this is exactly the team that I'm going to be facing in my next start. I get it. It's more structured, but you can do it as a bullpen guy too. The way that I actually go about it is um, like short boxes. Short boxes are just, you're on the slope and your, your catch partner is like, you know, on the on on the dish or maybe a, a few feet in front of it. Now, I've learned that um, you know when I'm on a mound, I, I just naturally like go faster and things move faster. So I've actually shied away from that a little bit for my my prep work, um, and I've just done like flat grounds. But what I'm referring to is like picking out. Now this is how I go about it. You can kind of get creative, but picking out one specific at bat that you want to put attention to. Um, basically, how I would do it is like, you know, that night I'm I'm hot in the pen, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take one probably the hottest hitter on the other the opposing team in the opposing team's lineup. I'm gonna take that hitter, and in my short box or in my flat ground, I'm gonna approach that hitter. And I'm going to maybe do that for like one or two different guys, 
right? Depending on how many throws I've thrown already. <laughs> um, but that's going to put me in a, in a better physically and mentally space for when, you know, I get into a game. Um, so touching on mental now for me, the mental prep is going to be a little bit nerdy. If you guys listen to me for a while, you know that I, I get pretty, uh, passionate when it comes to like your, your, your breath work and being able to have a clear mind. Now, this is another huge importance regarding what type of pitcher essentially from the mental side that you need to be to be at your best right like I know I've played with guys that are that are freaking like I need to listen to scream oh hard heavy punk rock music before I go out I need to like be super pumped up I need to some guys need to have like rage some guys need to have like that wanting to fight and like pissed off mentality like the guy in the box is is like the worst enemy you know and all these things and I can be for certain that that is not me now it's nothing wrong with those guys that are but another piece to the identification process and, and actually putting absolutes on knowing who you are is like okay let's let's try these things and I've tried to be that guy I've tried to be like the hype guy like all right let's fire up and I'm not so for me my mental my, my mental preparation is like getting Zen man, like clearing the mind of thought, intentionally training your mind's ability to be clear of thought flow state, man. If you guys want, check out the book rise of Superman. It's fan fantastic on flow state and, and action adventure sports and, and stuff like that. And how we just perform our best when we're in flow, you know, there's, there's breath. So I'm putting a conscious effort, whether it be in the pen or like prep for that start, of like, okay, let's breathe. 10 minutes, focus on breath, clear the mind. Obviously, before any type of performance, there's going to be loud internal noises. And you just need to have the ability to like, accept that, not stress over those, accept them, move on and focus on breath. And for me, it's gratitude, it's mindfulness, right? Like, I've, I've been away from this game, I've gotten hurt i've gotten released i'm so grateful just like to have that opportunity so anytime that i have a jersey on shoot anytime i throw a freaking bullpen or catch play with my pops like there's so much gratitude and mindfulness towards that it's hard for me to stress really about anything um so for me that's something that i put a huge emphasis on man is like making sure that no matter what no matter how many hits you give up in a row no matter if you can't throw a strike or you can't throw a ball what <laughs> No matter what it is that, that the game is telling you you suck, it doesn't matter Like if you have the opportunity to do it and you have the opportunity to, to play the game that, that hopefully you love you know, and, and be around people and all that stuff that you know, you're, you're, gra you're grateful for that. And that's something for me that I think as soon as I came to that realization that you know, I was grateful it was basically after my lat surgery and then coming back and being able to throw, that was like my whole new kind of outlook on this game and the ability to throw it was like man I just didn't throw for a year straight now I get to this is freaking awesome you know and uh, it's easy as human beings to take all those things for granted right and just expect that uh, or just to think that we're expected to be able to do that right um, and usually it takes a pretty drastic life event for then you to get out of that kind of thinking but that's something again all of this stuff that I'm saying, guys, is, is related to me, you know, and I just want to give that and maybe you guys can take something from it. But as I mentioned, if you take one thing from this is like, hopefully you can take something that is, um, is highlighting the importance of figuring out who you are and what you need to do. Right. Um, another mental, I guess, I guess this would be mental is, is physical though, is just prep work in regards to just something that you can check off the box and something that you can always do is know the opposing team lineup, know which guys are your bangers, know which guys are hot in the last five days. I put a huge importance on like knowing, um, you know, who's swinging it. Baseball is such a game of, of like runs and such a game of, of who's hot at the right time. And it's hitting's contagious. And like when you're swinging it, well, you're obviously like mentally doing really good. And that I put, I put more of an importance on basically like the last seven games or the last week stretch for players more than I do anything else 
more than I do historically, more than I do, you know, the whole entire season, right? So two types of examples, guy could be hitting like a buck 90, but this week he's seven for 15, you know, or the guy could have four homers on the year, but this last week he's had three. So I'm going to treat him like a power guy, right? So, or another example would be um, for guys that are like, you know, hitting 320 on the year, but the last week they've, they're, they're over, they're over the last 21. Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to totally treat that guy like a scrub, obviously, because his track record speaks for itself. But it's not to say that I need to, or, or potentially like a situation rolls around in a game and I come in and, you know, he's at the dish and I maybe on any other time without knowing that information would pitch around him. But now I'm going to attack him because I know he's maybe struggling seeing it. You know, he's had a bad week. So stuff, stuff like that, like those little things that, that could play a huge role. And as I got older and as, I, as I've, you know, played a lot more and, and just been around a lot really influential people, <laughs> I've realized like those are all things that are controllable, right? Those are all things that are controllable that influence your success rate, man, that influence your performance. Now I will say, man, there's guys that I've spoken to, there's guys that I've played with that are the exact opposite. They don't want to know anything. They don't want to know about their mechanics. They don't want to know about the other team. They don't care who they're playing. They don't care who they're facing. They don't care what I ate that morning. They don't care how much I slept. They don't care how much dues are. <laughs> they don't care if the hot water doesn't have what? The shower doesn't have hot water. They just want to go out there and throw because simplistic and like all of those things we talk about with the simplistic mindset, those trump anything. And I'll be honest, I, there was a time where I thought I was like that. And there was, I, I did that, you know, it didn't matter. I didn't pay attention to the game during when the games were playing. Like, I'll be, a, I'll be honest and I'll admit that. And I'll be the first one to say that I, I don't think I was right. I don't think that that was the best route for me. Um, and I think there's just something about when you know that you're being intentional and you know that you're checking the right boxes, you know that you're doing the right things, you know that you're putting all of your time and energy into the task, into your performance, into like everything that, that goes within being a good player, you're checking all of the right boxes. There's something about that. There's something to be said about the, the subconscious and the placebo or whatever it is um, knowing that that gives you a little bit more confidence, right? Like I tell people that all the time, where do you get your confidence? You've struggled your whole minor league career. Why are you still confident? And it's like, because my work speaks for itself, my work, the, the time and effort that I put into this journey gives me conviction, gives me confidence. I full well know when I lay my head that night on the pillow, like I've done every single thing that I needed to do that day to put myself in a better situation, to outperform guys, to get guys out, to do that. Um, so last thing, I don't really wanna go over 30 minutes, so I'm pretty close. Last thing that I will say is uh, get with your catcher, establish a game plan. You know, if you're a bullpen guy, it's gonna be a little bit harder, obviously, but um, you, it, it, it can still be done, right? Take, take time, any time that you do have to get with the catcher, that's probably gonna be catching you majority of the games. Any time that you have, get with him and and make sure that he knows exactly the sequences you like your best pitches counts how do i attack righties how do i attack lefties make sure that he knows that because when it comes to rhythm and when it comes to like flow out on the mound again this is kind of more personal experience when it comes to all of those things the catcher plays a huge role in that setting yourself up for success so if he doesn't know who i am and he doesn't know that Maybe I like to throw a 1-0 curveball, or he doesn't know that I like to throw, you know, lefties, um, you know, arm side sliders, whatever it is. Then we're gonna struggle uh, getting on the same page, and it's it's gonna be tough. Um, but those are all things that are controllable, right? And if he does know all those things about you, and he does know all your tendencies that you like, now there's rhythm, there's no interruption, there's flow, and now it's like, oh, this is great. It there's nothing more that fires me up than like being on the same page as your catcher. Like 
knowing which pitch you want to throw and then getting that sign and being like, oh baby, let's go, right? Um, okay, so camera dies in two seconds.